Look what showed up this morning. Our 966, three months later. I'm getting this thing ready. I'm actually gonna mow hay today. That's the plan. And um, I wanna do it with this. The only thing, the hydraulic couplers on this girl, I think they might be the Pioneer ones, but I couldn't tell you. So um, I'm gonna go try to hook it up. If they don't fit, then we'll probably mow with the Agco and we'll deal with this later. But if they do fit, awesome, because I do really wanna mow with this tractor. I'm gonna put some diesel in it and then we'll go up to the barn and shimmy some stuff around. But then I got to bring the disc mine down and I got to set my uh, my cutter height. I got to grease it and make sure that my uh, tension springs are right so it floats right. Um, but we're going to put some diesel in this and we'll head up. Well, there you go. The Ag Toe and the hay bind. Getting her done. We got her set about three inches. And uh, we were hoping to be doing this with the International 966. Couldn't get the hydraulics uh, working properly, so got some things to uh, work out there. But uh, in the meantime, we can do it with this guy. Get him mowed up. First cutting of 2022 mowed. So we mowed this uh, a good bit before it matured. Um, the reason being is I got 15 acres of custom work that um, I'm doing for my neighbors and I wanted to get ours knocked out before that. Um, ideally, we could have maybe let this go on another week, but next week does not look like a very nice week to make hay. Took a little bit to get our uh, cutting height set right, but um, I like where we're at now. Unfortunately, I did not get to use the 966 because we were having hydraulic issues. Uh, I didn't film any of that because we were pretty frustrated. Um, for some reason, we could unfold and fold the disc bind, but we could not lift it or lower it. Um, so I don't know what that was about. Other than that, everything went pretty smooth. Disc bind worked good. The Agco pulled it fine. I was probably pulling around at eight mile an hour um, and I could go faster um, with the disc bind, but Probably not with the tractor. The tractor was a 65, 70 horse tractor and, and uh, this thing was using every bit of that horsepower. So um, I wouldn't want to put anything smaller on this disc mine. Um, the Agco will run it fine, but there were times where I was losing a little bit of power and by the end of mowing this, she was starting to get a little warm. Um, not overheating, but a little bit warm. So 
Anyway, we're gonna fold her up. I gotta head to work and do a little bit of uh, mowing around a chicken house. But uh, I will be back. I'm probably gonna wash off the disc bind because it's a nice thing to do. I wanna keep good equipment. Wash it off. I got my, un my uncle is coming to put, um, to rig up our other tractor, the 966 for the baler. We did the ag kill already. Uh, we did some wiring, but we're gonna do that to the uh, 966 here today. Um, we'll see if I'm here to do that with him or he might just drop parts off. Anyway, first cutting done. So anyway, I finished tedding with the Agco. Um, at least I got it all tedded. All right, let's do some talking about this tractor. I guess I haven't really properly introduced it. Kind of just saw snippets of it in the video here. So this is a 1964 or 65, I forget, 966. Um, and we bought it as is, except we uh, ordered a canopy and the guys we bought it from put a canopy on it. This tractor is uh, like a 5,400 hour tractor, relatively low hours for this type of tractor. Normally these tractors are a lot higher hours because they're pretty sought after tractors. Now, we, uh, we expected uh, this tractor to be a real solid tractor, a reliable tractor, and hopefully down the road it is. But uh, what we're running into is just problem after problem. So we bought this tractor three months ago. We uh, it, because we wanted them to put a canopy on it, um, we had to wait much longer than expected because of shipping and the way that everything is in the world right now. So it took like three months to even get this thing ordered and shipped and for them to put it on. And so it took a long, long time and it showed up yesterday morning, the day that we wanted to mow hay. And we knew it was coming yesterday morning and that's what, kind of why we wanted to mow hay with it. And so we went to hook up to the disc vine and it just wasn't working right. And then I'm tedding and my PTO just shut off. Now, even though I'm really frustrated, we're gonna have a little fun. I'm gonna see if I can't put the straight pipe on this thing. Well, it doesn't actually fit over the uh, manifold, so it's actually just sitting on top, but I at least wanna see what it sounds like here. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. get as much stuff filmed as I can but there are some things that I'm not getting filmed because I'm also working at another farm and it's very busy right now and anyway my dad yesterday got the baler all hooked up and wired up to the 966 here she is 
Funny story, the whole reason this thing wasn't working right is because I didn't have enough hydraulic fluid. So got that fixed, works great now. Well, the other thing we had to do is we had to wire up our control box for our belt speed and that little toggle switch for our Gandhi, which is how we apply our Silo King, which is our inoculant. It's a natural inoculant, not acid. The funny thing is our steers and this might be with a lot of other animals too, but our steers will not touch the hay if it's if acid has been put on it. They won't. They just they won't touch it for a while until that acid is worn off. So, <coughs> oh my word, excuse me. So we're not going to use acid. We're going to use a natural inoculant. And it's more. It's a, a, a powdery stuff. Anyway, my dad hooked it all up and actually ran it through the field a little bit, and we got some hay. That's some really nice looking stuff. These are some of the ones that he threw. So that one's fine. That one's a little loose. I don't, I don't like how loose that one is. Um, I guess it's okay. Anyway, some really nice hay. It's gonna make some nice stuff. I got this moisture meter. If I remember how to use this thing. 18.3. And this one is 20.6 so it's on the high side i can feel kind of the dampness in this he bailed this last night after the sun had gone down the dew set on it so i can still feel the dampness in it a little bit now they say this inoculant that we're using i think don't quote me on this but i think it can be used on 30 percent hay if i'm not mistaken but like i said don't quote me on that so um yeah, anyway, that's 18 and 20%. So it's okay, a little on the higher side. I'm kind of shooting more for 14, 15, um, which I believe is what this is gonna be out here. So we'll go check these wind rows here. They're gonna dry off really quick here. We're gonna bail on a couple hours. So when I came home not long ago, I checked these wind rows to, to see them. Now there is a touch of dampness, right? Yeah, it's a little bit damp just right there. So we're gonna let the wind blow through it for a little while. Since I raked it yesterday and didn't bail it yesterday, um, overnight, all the wind rows settled, dew kind of set on them. And so I kind of flattened them, smushed them down a little bit. So um, I just, like I said, I, I just wanted to come through and, and flip them. Um, not nothing aggressive or anything. I was being trying to be really delicate with them just to kind of lay them over. And I kind of wish we had a roller bar rake just for that reason, because it would do maybe a better job of just rolling them over. But it still made a pretty nice wind row. So eh, that's actually pretty, getting pretty dry. Yeah, there's a touch of dampness in there, but not too much. Um, with the, it's partly cloudy, but it's also really breezy. So it should dry off here pretty quick. I still got a load of stuff that I got to do I'm gonna grease the baler. I got to calibrate the gandy. I got to grease the wagons. And I'd like to do some equipment shuffling up in the shed so we can kind of pack our equipment tighter and make room for hay. So we got a lot of work to do. I might put the camera down here for a while just so I can get this stuff done. But I have a buddy who's gonna come and he's gonna bring his fancy cameras. Very good at what he does. He's gonna get some video of us, so stay tuned. Let's bail some hay. 